there is going to have to be additional negotiation and additional refinement. The port, for example, our friends across the street went through this process a couple of years ago. They put out a request for proposal for their East Bay properties. They ended up negotiating with Lori over a number of years. And it really didn't come to fruition, but they went from the broad to the very specific, to the very specific 264 rooms and a 46,000 square foot conference space and so on. So there needs to be a lot more specificity to what you're showing us for me to understand how that will work. Okay. Well, again, we're, I think we've got obviously some work ahead of us. Uh, I think your question earlier about do we want to do this work now and wait on the CRA, adoption of the CRA, or are they really separate, separate functions? If we want to do this work now, I think adopting the CRA by the end of the year is, is going to be difficult. And if we really want to come up with the RFP, go through the RFP process, select a project or projects, I don't think that's something that we're we're going to be able to do between now and the end of the year. Is that what either of you are asking for? Because I, this would be the first I've heard that. In terms of the RFP? Of, by the end of the year, selecting a project. I, I, I don't think that it's feasible to, I don't think it's feasible to select a project by the end of the year unless mm -hmm. somebody steps forward with something. Uh, in, uh, you know, in the next, I don't know, if somebody's bringing something forward, maybe that's going to change everything. Uh, sure. But uh, we haven't even asked for anything. Right. Uh, I, uh, I would encourage people to bring forward proposals at any stage, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, I think a proposal can be a, a catalyzing element in all of this work. And that Jay can work with property owners to make that happen. I think that's a good thing. Uh, but uh, short of having a specific uh, proposal, I don't, uh, I, or a, a specific suggestion that comes forward that serves as a catalyst for the overall uh, CRA process. Uh, this is where I'm conflicted. You were saying that you know, if we can put together a plan that can go into the ordinance. You can sort of see how that would happen. Uh, whether or not that's uh, a good way to go, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I, um, uh, I don't know that if that'll sell with the rest of the council. Uh, I, uh, I'm not opposed to posing the question. But it's a, it's a, just, uh, it's a very general thing. I don't know where we fit in broader um, public engagement around that general plan in order to make it happen. Maybe that's possible. Uh, I'm hearing some uh, thought that there's a connection between this and the developers around the I, mean, I, uh, I think there's a connection between the RFP process and the developers um, And maybe, maybe the the plan versus the RFP or associating the RFP. Um, as, as I understand it, though, is we are at a point where we could come forward relatively quickly with the CRA plan and ordinance for adoption and for public consideration. How we do that public consideration, that's up to you. What's been proposed in our scope of work is one open house that would be participated with the CAC and the CERP and probably the council, the council uh, with an open house focused on the big plan, not on, not on the RFP process. So if, if it's our intention to have the CRA in place by the end of the year, Nice to know that that was our intention. That we were moving in that direction. Um, 
I personally don't think that there's a need for a lot more public engagement around the broad question. Do we have a community renewal area in our communities? Does this benefit our communities? I'm, I'm at least one that thinks that it does and that there is a consensus, at least among those who are knowledgeable about it, that it makes, makes sense for Olympia at this level. And then as we get into the project level is where we get into the debates. So, Let's, let's cut that off at this point and separate those two and, and continue to work on the RFP process but recognize it as part of the plan. Yeah, I, I just want to acknowledge that. I think that in my mind the public engagement process around the plan is as much a public education process as anything else and to get confirmation that this type of economic development activity is appropriate for the city to be engaged in. I think there are some who um, might not feel that public-private partnership is what we should be doing. And we need to know what level of support we have out there. But I agree with you, those who we've been working with and those who understand what we're describing, we have unanimous support from. So being able to go forward with properties of interest and some description of the sorts of things we're talking about and just generally what a CRA is and get a plan adopted with that, I think gives us good gives us a good foundation to then move into the next phase. That helps. So what are we gonna see? And I I I don't, uh, I, I don't know, uh, I mean, I, I feel like we could have that much now. Um, it, it, I agree, we're dang close. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so, that, absolutely. Uh, but when are we going to see it? I'm not sure. Okay. Uh, Lorelai, are you still there? You all forgot I was here, didn't you? No. No, no, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> we just thought we were going to sleep during all the time. No, no, I haven't gone to sleep. Th thank you for um, hanging there. Yes. Hopefully, you heard the question, which is the, the when in regards to bringing an ordinance or and a, a plan forward uh, in last week's telephone conversation with Jay Rich. Jay certainly indicated a willingness and an ability to review an ordinance and to help to develop one. I think we're not far removed from having a plan. Um, we need to define and, and um, develop a way to insert this notion of the RFP into that plan. Once we're there, to me at least in my mind, we're very close to being done, if not done. Yeah, I, I think you are correct about that. A lot of the information that's in the feasibility plan is the documentation that we need to be able to support an ordinance. Uh, we've been, so, so we could write the very general community renewal plan fairly quickly. But the question about the level of specificity that you all desire on which projects are included, which properties are included, and the question about how much public involvement is necessary in order to give you the feedback that you need to feel comfortable moving forward with an adoption are the two questions that are holding us back from delivering a specific timeline for production of a plan and a resolution. Um, we, we need to, if we're going to do an open house, get, get a date on the calendar for that and start getting organized to put it together. And if we're gonna run this RFQ process as a separate um, a, a separate process that is reflected in the plan, that's great. We just need to figure out the language to put into the plan to reflect that. Um, but if it's something that needs to be sequenced differently so that the output of the RFQ process can be reflected in the plan, then obviously we're on a very different timeline. So as Keith mentioned earlier, there's, there's a couple of fundamental questions that we need to get the answers to collectively before we can determine what our timeline for, for adopting a resolution would be. 
um, those are how much public involvement and, and when and what is the role of the RFQ, RFQ process. Um, now, Keith and I, Keith, I believe this is still the case, so correct me if I'm wrong, but we have a, step, a call schedule with Jay tomorrow, correct? Yes, it's on my calendar. Yeah, so I think that would be a really great opportunity for us to ask a few of these questions that have come up today and float a, a timeline and really sort of work out the specifics of, um, you know, what, what the production schedule would look like that we could then send back to you all for review. Um, but it would be good to get at least some, some sense here tonight on this call of whether we are in fact still on the timeline of trying to adopt the community renewal plan this year. My understanding coming out of the retreat was that the council had, there was a strong consensus that, and desire on the part of council to have a community renewal area adopted by the end of the year. Okay, well, let's talk about that specific schedule then. Creating a community renewal area. Right, right that means adopting the ordinance. Right. Establishing a community renewal area. And I guess the other question that I would have for the committee at this point then is are you comfortable with a fairly narrow amount of public participation? What we have scope right now is one open house. Um, again, from my perspective, I think that that's at least a, a good place to start and you can see what level of interest there is and what level of education or lack thereof there is a plan on that one open house and we can always adjust. And like Laurel says, you know, we need to get that on the calendar and we need to move towards that. We would have a draft plan for presentation and discussion um, and then get feedback and then be able to roll forward and hopefully finalize the plan and come to the council by the end of the year. Is there also a public hearing in the process? There is a public hearing. Yeah. Yeah, that's a requirement. That, that is your only public involvement required by law, okay. is the public hearing. Certainly not advising for the So I can mouth off with an opinion again, which is I think that uh, we should take the um, shorter approach the more expedient approach and get a CRA adopted and to save Lorelai's valuable time for the real project which is coming up after adoption of the plan. Save our resources. Mm -hmm. I don't know if we're setting ourselves up for failure if, uh, or if we're really trying to get somewhere with it. I think there needs to be strong agreement about the, uh, from the council about exactly what these the steps should be before we do have a citizen participation process. Okay. And the things that uh, I'm hearing, uh, uh, there's only partial agreement from our committee about what the role is for the citizens advisory committee going forward. Um, I think Julie and I are saying mm -hmm. the citizens advisory committee is really not been around just to get us to the public, broader public participation process, nothing further than that. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I think in terms of the RFP process and the focus of the RFP, I think Julie and I are saying mm -hmm. that the RFP process, which is an RFP, I will emphasize, not Q, um, is uh, that it helps um, define an invitation and cast a broad net uh, for uh, an invitation to bring the, uh, the private sector to the table uh, to with projects that fit uh, a very clear set of criteria for moving our downtown forward. Um, but that it's, a, it's a broad process. It's not a, a pre-limited There's just partial agreement on the committee about that. If there's not unanimity, we need to engage the full council. I think that'll be a 
hard thing for us to do, and it'll just continue to fragment. As, uh, uh, but I think that the, the council discussion has to proceed a citizen participation process. I think we need to know what we're doing as a council going into that process. Uh, and part of this is sorting out how we're going to be doing an RFP, which means much, much clearer staff work on the RFP. Meet that means some calendar dates, some criteria, uh, seeing uh, a, a near final draft of the ordinance with everything that we uh, we know um, just with it highlighted in bright line what it is needs to be filled in. Uh, so it's as much pre work as we possibly can have. And then have a, a council meeting around that stuff. You see that as a study session? Uh, yeah, I, I think we do this kind of stuff, you know, uh, better as a study session. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was hoping that we'd go into that to the uh, much higher level of agreement on, on the part of the committee, but we're not there. We need to flesh these things out. And, uh, uh, if there's agreement that, that that's the next step, then I was actually hoping to see calendar dates on this stuff. But uh, I, I would I would ask for that to be worked out. I don't think it makes sense for us to do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What I just heard from Lorelai is that until we can provide direction as to what we're looking for, she can't give us dates. It, it really is dependent upon what what are we doing? Are we doing a general community renewal area um, plan or are we having specific projects included in there? If we're having specific projects and going through the RFP process. Right, and if, um, I, I think that if your goal is to adopt it this year, it's going to have to be the, gen, the general plan that doesn't include the specifics on projects and that has a pretty limited approach to public involvement because there simply won't be time to get through the adoption process. Yeah, I think that was agreed upon before we came to this. Yeah. Meeting. That was a, yeah. so, uh, so there's your answer on that part. Yeah. All right. Uh, so is the public process like what we said, it's just really talking about the boundaries and the government and that piece here. And that meets our that and including some notion of this RFP process. Yeah. And not specifically, right. but generally, this is how we're going to make decisions about what projects we are going to engage in. And the projects may involve use of condemnation or uh, trading properties or all, all sorts of other different. Um, approaches that are allowed by virtue of adopting community renewal area, but not with a great deal of specificity about exactly what that looks like. That would come through an RFP process. And we do have a timeline laid out. We have a, a calendar of committee meetings laid out from now until the end of December that include you know, specific deliberations. Of course, we had planned to have our workshop on an open house on the community renewal area back in July or, or August, I believe it was. So we'll have to adjust that and, and fit the open house in. Again, I think if we're going forward with this general community renewal area plan, then I think we can still achieve the, the year-end goal. So I think it's doing the pre-work for that and identifying options for a, a council working okay. session around that. Thank you. I've got all the direction you that can I can stand. use to <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.
guess I'd look to our committee members. Um, I I would be grateful for staff work in response to the questions that are, uh, need to be resolved. So any investment from staff in responding to those questions and playing it out in terms of uh, what was expressed as a council interest in having an ordinance by the end of the year, I think that can be good. Okay, I think based on this discussion, we're in a much better t position to do that. Okay. We hit all four bullets. What's that? I think we've hit all four bullets. I think that there may be uh, a need for uh, fleshing out options, uh, a couple options under uh, a couple of the bullets. But um, yeah, I, I think uh, we've been struggling with all four of those. Mm -hmm. uh, so. Want to try to talk about the developer ground <laughs> there? Let's go. Yeah. Hey, do you, do you need me to stay on the call for the creek? That's up to you, Lorelai. Uh, I know you certainly can add a lot to the conversation, but I understand that it's also uh, 8 o'clock, and you may need to add some something to your family as well, so. <laughs> I, I, I do hear a lot of chaos from you around outside of the study that we're here. <laughs> All right, so I, I can fill you in uh, tomorrow about this conversation okay. and what role you might play. <laughs> okay, that sounds good. Um, I'm just very quickly, I'm sending you an email with some time that I'm available to chat tomorrow okay. before we talk to Jay just to coordinate. Great, thank you. Okay, thank Bye. you very much. Thanks, Laura. Bye-bye. Community Renewal uh, Community and Economic Revitalization Committee meeting. The committee asked that we include this item on, on uh, your calendar so that you could provide further input and guidance regarding the development roundtable. Uh, Michael and I have had a chance to coordinate and to uh, talk about this and potentially his role in facilitating that meeting. Uh, um, so We've obviously laid out for you, I got the wrong type of paper here. We've laid out for you the scope of the round table, and I'm not sure if there's a desire to change that based on our conversation this evening. Uh, previously, we had talked about round table objectives and desired outcomes. Uh, the objectives being to provide development interest with it overview of the regional and local economy. That's a role that Lorelei can play to document feedback from development interests about their perspectives on the local economy and opportunity sites and how to enhance local development potential, document ways to encourage greater investment in Olympia, and document ways to move Olympia towards a more, more proactive approach to community development. I think that provides an opportunity for us to have that conversation about the RFP and how we could use that to further interest uh, in this process. I think the RFP is exciting, and I think the, the people that we are anticipating inviting to the inviting into this process will be excited to provide input into that process and also to the broader economic development questions in our field. So I think there is an opportunity to develop those two if, if you're interested in that. Um, actually, the roundtable objectives, I think, actually makes sense to me. Um, we always always approach a roundtable. It's a lot different than a focus group. I, I want to make sure that um, you're getting exactly what you need. So I, I thought I'd just, as I said, you know, framing some comments, I thought I'd kind of, I always kind of go to eight or nine things <coughs> that I try to accomplish with a roundtable. It's not a focus group. It really is a roundtable discussion, honest discussion about engaging folks, about providing feedback on a variety of different things. So I thought if I just outlined to you my philosophy with the roundtable, 
what we try to accomplish. Um, you'll see that your four main objectives, I think we'll, we'll be able to get those very, very well. And then we'll talk a little, I'll talk a little bit about how I envision that we could accomplish that. Um, um, really, it's, I, you know, I always kind of go back to nine basic things. We want to engage with folks with the data, and I think the things that we do at the Economic Development Council is we provide data and conversation, and Lorelei will be an absolute um, godsend for that as well. We want to post some uh, larger questions, larger questions to the group about uh, what they provide and what they do within the community and their role within the, within, within the development genre. Obviously, you're going to have folks there that are not just builders, and they're not just developers, they're, just, they're not just real estate, there's some financiers and a variety of different things, they're just smart, general smart people. And then we want to make sure there are people there that um, have an interest in uh, furthering the economy of the South Puget Sound market, more specific Olympia. So that's the two items. The third thing is the trust. Um, they need to trust the facilitator. And so I like to build uh, a little bit of interaction with them so that they have an idea that um, what the information they provide to the facilitation group uh, will be honestly recorded and reported back and used in a fashion that's not um, safe zone type activity. And you, this is all the stuff that you know. And then we want to start fleshing out um, how we look at things differently and we want to kind of incorporate and find out the type of thinking that we haven't thought of before. You're all very smart individuals. It struck me in the last two hours and four minutes um, the depth of knowledge that you have in your community. You're, 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 you're the smart folks in the audience, in, in the room, but um, you look at questions differently. And these folks look at questions differently because that's the nature of their business. They're not civic elected officials. They're private sector folks that look at um, how do you build buildings and how do you attract investment. So we want to kind of flesh that out. And then we certainly want to generate interest. Um, I think one of the things that if we can walk away with there that um, Keith has a cadre of individuals that have historically been kind of interested in what he does, but is truly interested in this project moving forward, you want to have that, that, that in your back pocket. You walk away, they walk away with something in their front pocket that says, geez, I really want to work with these folks and look for that next step. And you guys want to walk away with something in your back pocket that says, you know, as we move towards that public engagement or that open house or that adoption, that you have that knowledge in your back, that people are interested in what you do and this is not operating in a vacuum. And then the next thing we want to do is certainly define how that potential engagement might, might occur. Um, kind of the people need to have that goes back to the idea that we talked about is that trust, you know. And so we want to define a little bit about um, how folks can come back and revisit the question. You don't want people you don't want to have people walk away and think, well, that was nice. Uh, it was an echo chamber. I don't, I don't want that to happen at all. And then the last thing we want to do in the day, in the evening, is to report back. And so there's an opportunity of sharing with each other. Um, we anticipate that we would break the group up, depending on how we get there. Well, right now we have 36 folks, 35 folks on the list of invitations. Obviously, we'll do this in a two hour <coughs> chunk of time ish. Not everybody's going to have the time if everybody takes a turn at the podium. So we'll break it up into a, a palatable bite size. We'll move people around to make sure that they have an opportunity to engage with each other, but also engage with the topic and have an honest dialogue about, geez, I have my voice heard. Um, and then uh, then we'll go from there. Um, we, we do anticipate that I'll bring my team, and it won't just be me, while I'm engaging in very uh, cordial with people. Um, I tend to run pretty thin for folks after a while. So I'll bring my team, um, and then we'll, uh, we'll kind of scope that ahead, ahead of time. After I've kind of heard tonight, I have a different idea as to how I want to approach this a little bit. I'm glad I came, actually. I think what we'll do is um, Renee and Annette and uh, our folks will sit down and kind of come up with some interactive um, activities. There is some things popping in my head that will generate. Nothing worse than going into a round table and saying, gee, uh, council member, what do you think? Uh, but I want to engage you and challenge you with some suppositions. Okay. That's really what I have for you. Um, I think that the scope of work that you have around the objectives is good. I, mean, I can't anticipate changing that at all. I think you've got four items there that you'll, you'll be able to get in. So the report back will allow you to uh, not only go into an RFP, RFQ process, but certainly understand 
questions that folks need to um, look for as they develop into a community, but also into this community. We want to engage those questions about what you need to have in a blank slate community. But what I'm right now thinking in terms of Olympia, what do you need to have here? And so that's where the trust comes in. You need to trust that I'm going to ask those questions at that time. Just um, an affirmation that there was a brief discussion of this developer roundtable at the West Olympia Business Association meeting today. They already know we're talking about this. Mm -hmm. So I was pleasantly surprised. So it's been some a little bit of stay work done. They asked me to brief them on the agenda, so I'm glad we're having this conversation <laughs> now. Um, so it was a it was a short response from me, frankly, but that's all right. I like what you just said. Um, that's working for me. Um, that laid against the objectives and the outcomes that you provided, Keith. I, I think we've got some meat here. Um, I, I have been pleasantly surprised by the responses that we've gotten from the development community up to this point. They, apparently they do want to talk to us uh, and do want to engage with us. And so that's, that's good news. So I, I think that as you said, they will participate. Um, so I, I don't have constructive criticism for you tonight. I, I, I feel good about what we're doing. One thing that I would acknowledge that I see here is that we want to talk about not just CRA, but we want to talk about the, the other opportunity sites that we've looked into. And we also want to talk about Olympia and the region in more general terms as well. So while uh, we've acknowledged tonight, we do want to see our a CRA component or even focus to this process that there's more to talk about than just CRA. If I'm, if, if that, if I'm hearing that discussion correctly. Actually, I, I think you um, said that better than I did um, in the sense that I, I personally believe that yeah, the topic of the day is CRA, and that's where we're here, right? But you want a long-term relationship with folks. Um, and I think we need to recognize that folks want to have that relationship with you. Um, and, and in any relationship, it's a two-way street. And so a roundtable is designed to be, that's why it's a roundtable on a focus group. A roundtable is designed to start that process. And so um, Keith and I were chatting the other day, and I didn't, certainly wasn't being over solicitous to the city of Olympia standing in our region. But I think you need to um, plant your flag in the middle of this thing and say, you know, you are the downtown, you know, the downtown for the, for the region. And folks, economic developers, not me, but folks that create jobs um, are interested in that long-term relationship with you. Because um, they don't want to not play with you. They don't want to pretend that you don't exist. There's a unique opportunity here, and I think uh, that's what you want. Obviously, the CRA is the question, but you're going to want that relationship with them. Because I don't envision this. I think you ought to actually set the table today to have this conversation next year at the same time. Maybe a different topic. Maybe CRA is moving forward, but you're going to want that conversation. I would strongly recommend that that happen. If you can um, call upon us to help that uh, happen, but I think you need to have that. Well, just that our, I just want to clarify, so really our job to be there is really, we're working on this relationship, this conversation, so we're there to listen, but you want us to also participate somewhere, but I want to make sure we're clear. I don't really want you to participate other than Thank listen. you, listen, because that's yeah. what I'm thinking, but you, if you're going to ask yeah. me, okay. You know, and I, I'm a, you know, I tend to come off as an easygoing guy, and he's, yeah, it's all, it's all good, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I don't want to, um, what I don't want to happen is somebody say, you know, I came down to the city of Olympia nine years ago with a permit. It took me uh, 17 years to get this thing. I'm not interested. That's that's good conversation to have in the parking lot tomorrow. But tonight we're talking about moving forward. And we're going to want to know some concrete examples to allow the city leaders to have that leadership level with you. So if you want to have a discussion point, you know, we should talk about it. But I did envision it. I, you know, I did envision I did envision 
that the mayor would welcome as the, the leader of the council, that you would have that welcome. This is kind of, you know, what the council stands for. Now, Michael, please take on, and then I'll certainly introduce uh, Keith, and we'll go from there. But I did not envision that the council members would would have that would have that role. Nor staff. Uh, I guess a couple of things. Uh, you know, I, I I think we understand. Michael, I mean, this isn't a. This would, we're not there just to get beat up for the same old, you know, oh, type yeah. stuff of. Uh, uh, Olympia is a, a mean place to come. <laughs> The mean streets of Olympia. Yeah. Uh, I uh, I think this is a challenging area to develop because of the, of the market. Uh, I I, uh, I recognize that uh, you know, we uh, uh, we also have a uh, we often have a conflicted public in terms of specific projects, uh, but. This is a this is a tough region to develop in. Otherwise, we would have uh, you know, the brewery would be popping. It's not. Uh, the opportunity sites. I think I wanted understood that were uh, at least in terms of the methodology that I was contending with the opportunity sites. Uh, We've done sort of a condition assessment of a group of opportunity sites that uh, we've collected data and information. We sort of know where those opportunity sites sit within uh, the local market, but they're, they're not necessarily uh, areas of interest. Uh, uh, at least some of them aren't, just because of their position in the market. It, it's too heavy of a lift. Get some of them into a different place. Uh, one site we're still accumulating data on in terms of in, uh, uh, we're, we're making progress in uh, the uh, old uh, dump site uh, in terms of the environmental profile. That's good. We're making progress there. Um, my own hope is that we're we're constantly sort of evaluating. Uh, what sites of interest we should be focusing on within the city of Olympia uh, and, and, con and continue down this path of accumulating data and identifying areas um, that are areas of interest or opportunity sites for the community that we need to, we need to keep our eye on or potentially generate interest over. But it's not just staying stuck with these, with this, this one that makes sense? Mm -hmm. I guess when, when I was thinking about the sort of information that we would find, I'm not anticipating a lot of lecture. And I think our real value is in hearing from them, and the quicker we get to that, the, the better. So I would anticipate a very light load of you know, what, are we, what are we trying to, where have we been through this process, what have we looked at, and uh, what feedback and input do we want from you? Okay. Yeah, I, I was also going back to one of my points is that we want to get that unthought of or unspoken thoughts. I don't have all the answers myself. And there's, you know, somebody's out there thinking of a, a corner of X and Y. Never really thought about that corner before, but it certainly is a unique opportunity to do something. This is the kind of thinking that I think you want to bring out. Is that folks? They're looking at opportunities all the time and what that market is. So your your comment about the main streets of Olympia, I'm not interested in that dialogue at all. And we will certainly do our best to make sure that um, that's the tone and the tenor. Um, this is not an opportunity. This is not a free shot. It's not a free shot at uh, the folks that aren't going to respond. So let's, let's talk about what is your best thinking about opportunities. So I like your notion of market-based questions. 
will develop a list of market-based questions that should bring out some of that thinking. Um, so Keith and I will, will, will I'll need to get his best thinking about how to project um, the information up front to make it easy for them. But again, we really want them to start ruminating and thinking. They may get off point a little bit. And that's the beauty of these things. We don't really, you know, well, if you don't really know where people are going to go, sometimes you give them a microphone. But if you frame the question properly, you'll get that feedback about what it is that you would like to do as a community leader. So, but I, I hear you on the, the mean streets of LP. This is not a this is not an opportunity for that. Not, we're not really interested in that. But I would be interested in any kind of thinking about a sector approach to development that was specific to LP. So, uh, and by that, you know, it's, uh, we have, uh, you know, I think by your count, we have like somewhere around 800,000 square feet of empty office space in uh, North County. Uh, I think somewhere around 45% uh, of that is in, uh, very close to downtown Olympia. Yeah. It's either up on the hill uh, or right in downtown Olympia. Uh, and what would be a sector approach to filling that? Uh, you know, that's, we also want to talk about your competitive advantage. What is it relative to the sector? You know, where my office is in, or by the Lacey City Hall, it's 385,000 square feet of office space that's vacant, Class A. It's vacant for a while. Been vacant for four and a half, five years now. So, what is Olympia's market advantage? And maybe there's an unstated market that we don't know about. We've been focusing focusing about five clusters: IT, telecom, healthcare, life sciences. So maybe there's that seventh sector that I haven't really discovered. Um, you do have a budding software development downtown. Couple onesie twosies, couple threesies, but maybe there's another one that we don't know about. So. Yeah, and actually, it's very interesting. I mean, uh, Lacey has the more of a unified approach because of one concentrated, yeah. like owner and developer of um, office space. Uh, the office space that we have available is, um, is it's actually pretty substantial, but it's more tucked over, uh, just uh, uh, plum, uh, uh, plum uh, the uh, southeast quadrant of Plum and Union, and, uh, uh, and then up on uh, uh, top of the hill uh, behind the courthouse area. And there's substantial square footage that's, that's empty, but it's not being marketed in any inside way. So sectors, sector approach, um, why, reasons why we're stuck in terms of what we are, what kinds of uh, things that uh, we could do as a community to get to a different place, potential uh, for partnership. I think all those things would be great. One question I, I've kind of been roaming about whether or not, ruminating about whether or not you should ask or kind of get into is I always like to ask folks especially when they're coming from um, maybe competitors. Because you know, if you're gonna have people in the room that are competitors, mm -hmm. pretty tough competitors, what's the, what's the goal? I mean, what's the big hairy goal, private sector goal? You know, what, what is it? Well, we wanna be the center. We think that we, from the private sector, we think we could be center of the universe for glass blowing or whatever. I don't know, I've thought about that question. I and bounce that idea off key a little bit, but um, sometimes you don't want to ask the question, something like that. But, um, but sometimes what comes out of it, um, example is, uh, I ever uh, asked the city of Linwood, and they asked the city of Mokopio, what do we do with Pink Hill? You know, I don't want to be the center for Boeing. I don't want to be aviation other than that, you don't want to be commercial service or one. That was their big hairy goal. It was, just, it was kind of an interesting process. So sometimes you get an answer that 
kind of long term consequences, positive, that you can start working on. So let me ruminate on, on that a little bit. Yeah. I, I, it's a pipe dream type of thing. Well, I mean, quite frankly, I mean, for years and years, the, the, the goal has been just to be the uh, landlord for the state. Sector approach and hearing some simulating some interest out there. And, and, uh, uh, what, uh, what, what do we think we can be really, really good at here? besides leasing space to state government that isn't interested in leasing space anymore? Yeah, it's changed up there. Look forward to your insights on CRA to uh, the, uh, uh, I think part of the challenge is uh, getting both uh, property owners and developers interested in So, Janet completed a summary of the, uh, yes. the differences or the, the of, of, uh, change that were recommended by Councilman uh, Hankins and Mayor Fluxcom. Um, I sat down to try and. I think it should be noted in the record that there is just one scat law on the committee. <laughs> Use that <laughs> I actually know what it is. I saw Julie's work and I was just so intimidated by the quality of the work. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't want to jump into this. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. So I, I guess it, when I sat down to try and put this all back together again, I was a bit overwhelmed <laughs> and, and overcommitted from a time perspective. Um, I certainly could make a best attempt at bringing the comments that I've received together into a singular document and submitting that back to you for review. Uh, if there's areas here, because Julie had recommended deleting some areas where the mayor had recommended modifying them, uh, deletion I think is a very powerful tool oftentimes in writing and one that's some, sometimes underused. So. Uh, deletion could could be valuable here, uh, and I know the mayor had some specific things that you wanted to include as well. So, did everybody read everything? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so uh, there wasn't any way for I, I tried to convert the document uh, into a little word document that I could actually edit, but that that wasn't possible. So I, all I had was a PDF, which is not much to work with. So I, I couldn't accept or reject changes, I, you know, I, which this is all I had. So um, it was a pretty static document. So um, it obviously needs more work from where it is at the moment. Uh, I think if we have all read it as a committee, uh, does anybody, uh, I mean, I, uh, I think, you know, your edits, I, I understood where you were going, um, <coughs> made sense. Um, uh, the things that I was trying to add, uh, you know, if those have value, you know, uh, if they're clear, mm -hmm. uh, or if you have, a, any, you have any concerns about what I was no. No. Uh, So I think the next step 
electric be a melding or something to it. Okay. Uh, I uh, can't do it here. Then it will kill us all. Because it's 8.30. At least one of us. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to die. Can I ask a timing question? I'm not sure when the next meeting is scheduled for. Uh, I'm trying to see how that fits into the overall process. It doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't. Yeah. That's what I'm wondering. Yeah. Should we? So I, I would suggest. I wonder if we can do this by email with the members. No, that's a meeting. Well, it could, it could be a meeting, but it could be. Uh, could be an announced meeting. I don't think we can do it. Could be I, I can yeah. certainly check with our city attorney. Um, they can't. They can't do a email to send all. Right, no, no, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about putting out a combined document with individual reaction. Oh, to it. That could then, if you're, I mean, I would assume you were okay with it as written, could go directly to council, uh, rather than coming back here one more meeting, but that's your decision, obviously. Yeah, the only choice that we have is uh, uh, to have someone Presume it's going to be key. Mm -hmm. I do a, a, a meld of what this is, and mm -hmm. it goes to council. Mm -hmm. uh, that's all we've got. Mm -hmm. I, okay. Uh, I, uh, I, I'd love. I mean, everybody. I mean, we will look at a meld mm -hmm. at the same time the rest of the council. Does. Okay. And it goes to a study session. If I'm right, it doesn't right. go for adoption. It, uh, it goes to I think October seventh. October seventh. It's not going to go always to next week's meeting. No, and actually, we are, for our schedule, to get you a staff report on time, we would have to have completed as a draft next week to go into the process okay. to get into the staff report for October 7th. Okay. I'm just, I'm just performing deep of that before he commits. <laughs> well, Janet's already done all your work yeah. for you here. So.